Welcome everyone to the next installment of our virtual backpacking school training presented by the Miami group, the Sierra Club. Sierra Club is committed to a safety first culture and as a result, we've suspended our outings events, backpacking school, uh, etc. when the pandemic broke. We truly enjoy sharing our knowledge and experience that hopefully makes it easier for people to get out there and experience the backcountry. Uh, we've chosen this virtual platform to keep doing that so that once we're on the other side of this pandemic, uh, more of our friends will be able to safely and confidently enjoy backpacking. Our uh, main presenter for this evening is Brian Wolf. Brian is co-owner of Roads, Rivers and Trails. Brian, you wanna introduce yourself? Co-owner at Roads, Rivers and Trails. Um, and my passion for backpacking started with a, uh, my very first trip was the Appalachian Trail through hike, um, which was September to February, um, about 11 years ago now or 12 years ago now. Um, and so I've been working with the Sierra Club um, as a, you know, instructor and educator and, um, you know, always love to uh, help inspire, educate whenever I, whenever I can. So thanks for joining us. Um, also with me is Nancy. I'll let her, Nancy, introduce herself. Um, hi, uh, my name is Nancy Ball and I've been backpacking and um, leading trips pretty much all over the place, locally, uh, domestically, and around the world since 2005, but I've been camping for my whole life, as long as I can remember. Um, this past year, I launched a new business, planning and leading adventure trips. My company name is Summit Truck and Travel. Um, I'm also an instructor for the Sierra Club Backpacking School. And uh, just in case you missed that little nuance in Brian's introduction, his very first backpacking trip he mentioned the dates, but it was a through hike of the AT through the winter months. I think that's pretty gutsy for a beginner backpacking trip. Anyway, um, just wanted to point that out. And then we also have Denise with us. Denise? Hi, my name is Denise Tingle. Actually, Pippi Longstockings is my trail name based on I always wear braids when I'm backpacking. Um, and I've been hiking and backpacking for 45 plus years. I am the hiking chair leader for the Miami Group Sierra Club, along with a backpacking school instructor. In addition, I lead cycling rides and backpacking trips, and my passion, of course, is backpacking, cycling, and I just love the outdoors. Barry? Yeah, even though we don't have his picture on here, Barry <laughs> is also <That's> okay. <laughs> with us today. Yeah, I, uh, I had to unmute there for a second. Hi, I'm Barry Randall, uh, also known as Artvark, and uh, I'm actually the chairperson of the Miami Group Sierra Club Outings Committee. So we lead uh, local uh, hikes and paddle events, uh, backpacking, etc. Welcome, everyone. And uh, apologies, so this is, I feel like, the second time in a row I didn't include Barry's photo in my presentation, so I'm going to make his extra large next time. Uh, as, as a That's okay. The, the other folks are much better looking. So, <laughs> uh, so and then uh, also uh, behind the scenes here, um, uh, uh, we have Nicole, and, and Nicole is the volunteer coordinator for the Miami group uh, based in Southwest Ohio. Nicole regularly works on member and volunteer recruitment, communication techniques, outreach, and organizing uh, committees on environmental activism. She has a passion for using nature as a natural healer in body care and wellness, and in her free time enjoys hiking, sign language, swimming, and traveling. Uh, and we could not be here or doing this without Nicole. So thank you, Nicole. Um, and that brings us to some of the, uh, the meat of it. Uh, why you guys uh, joined us here, and uh, I try to find as, as much of a contrast here uh, for two photos as I could. Um, I wanted to kind of split this up into two sections, um, and so kind of dividing it, uh, you know, between um, two choices here. Um, you could look at it as seasonal, or we'll kind of go over what else is involved with that. Um, you know, looking at different temperature or different weather that you'll encounter um, in, in two segments as far as what your clothing setup might look like. Um, so it's not, like I said, not just seasonal, but paying attention to different regions, elevations, or just des destinations, uh, weather patterns 
uh, as you go are going to have diff different recommendations for your clothing setup. Um, and that quickly brings us, uh, I like throwing it out there right away, to our first poll. Um, so Denise, if you could please launch the first poll here. What condition best describes your when you're most likely to hike or backpack? It's gonna be a pick one. I'm happy to say that we have answers across the board. Not as many as I'd like in the winter or the cold temperatures, as, as that's kind of my favorite, but um, fall is, 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 is uh, my second, second favorite, so happy to see a lot there. Uh, some for summer, some for spring, a little bit scattered there. Um, thank you, Denise, for sharing that uh, and launching that there. Um, out of that guy there. Um, so we're going to start uh, with the cold weather side of it. Um, and um, so this is a little background, uh, you know, more so on me and some kind of trips that I've done here. Um, I kind of made a tradition of doing cold weather trips. Um, so this kind of graph dates back to 2014 and and really, we're anywhere from 40 degrees to negative 50 degrees with wind chill uh, across these trips. Um, and as kind of stated in, in the introduction, uh, my Appalachian Trail winter through hike, I, you know, obviously has, has credit to um, my appreciation for winter hiking um, and, and all of that. So that's kind of just been a passion since. And my favorite part about it is that your body temperature is totally controllable. Um, this is where your wardrobe totally comes into play um, and you're in charge. Um, so, you know, summer, summer hiking is great. You know, we had one summer hike kind of um, response there too. Uh, but I, I really enjoyed the control that we have here. Um, so this, this next image, you know, we're, we're kind of going over and we're going to talk about the different ways that you lose heat and, and this um, illustration is, is showing it here. Uh, but why is, why is your clothing such a big deal? Why is it so important to have the right setup? Um, so frostbite can happen in less than a minute and hypothermia could happen in just a few minutes. Um, and so when you're traveling out in cold or just even cool conditions, so a lot of our answers were in the fall, um, and this still totally applies. Um, and some of the first symptoms of these conditions are fatigue and indecision, um, which just really kind of furthers the problem, right? Um, so the, the five big ones, radiation, respiration, evaporation, convection, and conduction is everything kind of being shown here. So we're going to kind of go over how your clothing, uh, your, your wardrobe can kind of counter um, a few of these things. Um, so typically you're looking at a four layer system, um, each with its own purpose. A common expression is to dress like an onion, meaning several layers. Uh, we'll talk about fabrics later on in this presentation, but first is just understanding the layers that you might want to be looking at. Uh, the first layer is your base layer. Think of this as a long underwear. This is moisture wicking. Um, and the main uh, focus of this layer is to combat evaporation. Um, so moisture is going to cool you 20 times faster um, than being in a dry environment. So combating moisture is going to be the name of the game here. Uh, the second layer is your mid layer. Think of this as light insulation um, that is also breathable. Um, so it's a transitional piece. You want this to still be wicking and quick dry, uh, but you also want it to trap your body's radiating heat. So as we kind of go back to the previous slide, um, we're looking at evaporation and radiation with your mid layer. Uh, this is most commonly a fleece layer is going to be like the most popular option here. Again, we'll go over um, fabrics more later. Uh, the third um, layer is your insulating layer. This is your optimum body heat retention layer. This is like a down or synthetic puffy coat. 
So this is when it gets cold. What are you putting on? What are you wearing? Uh, lastly, you have your outer layer. That protects you from the wind and the rain. Uh, this protects you from convection, if you go back to the previous slide. Um, it adds warmth as well, though, so don't underestimate this just as a warmth piece. Uh, you really need to utilize all the features of each layer that you have on. As you move, the addition and subtraction of these layers can be very important. Uh, to be able to add or remove layers as things change, like temperature, weather, or exertion, um, your biggest enemy in cold weather is sweat. So the colder it gets, the more often you might stop and add or subtract layers because it's more and more important to combat that moisture uh, being sweat there. Uh, wet skin and wet layers can make for a situation where it's very hard to stay warm. Um, some additional tips um, is just kind of understanding the weather that you might be going into. Uh, so we talked about just environment and, and it's not just seasonal, right? Um, so I usually recommend uh, assuming a five degree drop for thousand feet of elevation gain. Um, I'd also recommend pacing yourself. Remember, sweat's the enemy in this case. So uh, if you need to slow down your pace, that might be the best way uh, to combat the problem. I have nothing to say. I just wanted to show you guys this happy picture of myself right here. But also, let's not forget about accessories. Uh, happy extremities make for a happy hiker. Uh, you may not think of 50 degrees as cold weathered, um, as a cold weather night, but with prolonged exposure, it can give you quite the chill. Uh, beanie, gloves, or buff will be your best friend to make incremental changes um, as you move. Each can be put on or taken off without stopping uh, and change your temperature enough to avoid sweats or chills. So these are my most common moves. Taking off your pack to change a, uh, from a mid layer to a base layer or vice versa is gonna take a little bit more effort or a little bit more time. Uh, so if you can manage your temperature with these just very minor moves, um, you're going to be better off. Other incremental changes can include Quarter zips, these are common for your base layer or mid layer. Pit zips, uh, which is common for an outer layer like your uh, wind or rain shell. Uh, thumb loops, also common on mid layer base layer. Pulling the, that fabric across your wrist and hand actually makes quite the difference in retaining heat, uh, especially with your fingers warmth. Uh, and your draw cords. Um, at, at the hem. Uh, so, you know, at or hopefully below the waistline, uh, a longer uh, gar garment, especially if we're talking about an insulating piece or an outer layer, having that draw cord kind of come down and, and protect a little bit more of uh, your lower half is going to add a lot of warmth to it. And so any heat that you can trap in, forcing that heat up uh, and out the neck of the garment um, is going to keep you much warmer. Um, so it's not just utilizing all of those in full, but understanding that you could then loosen that draw cord, undo the thumb loops, uh, unzip the quarter zip, um, and then drastically lower your body temperature to avoid sweating. So it'll make a big impact. Um, and that's kind of a really quick run over of some winter layers and winter advice. Uh, not just winter, but cold, again, cold weather. Um, so I'll kind of take a pause here and just kind of see what questions you guys have. Not seeing anything in the uh, chat yet. But if anyone has questions, please put them in there. So with no questions, should I go ahead and pick up and move on, Brian? Um, yeah, I believe we have a pool to start this, this uh, next sec section, though, as well. Um, I, don't I have a so. question. I think that's later. <laughs> Here's one. If perspiration is your enemy, what do you do when that happens? Christina wants to know. Yeah, so... Um, 
we're, we're going to get to fabrics and the right fabrics so that perspiration is less of an issue. That's going to be a lot of what, you know, the next step is. Uh, but, you know, slowing down, slowing down and cooling off. Um, you're, you're sweating because your body is too hot, right? So it's your body's natural reaction to cool itself down. So if you could do so it, by other means that don't saturate the fabrics that you're wearing, um, whether it's drinking more water or taking a break or taking off a layer, um, that's, that's what you're going to want to do. Um, now, when you do so, you might immediately want to start hiking again because uh, you know, depending on how cold it is, you take off that layer and you're like, well, that was a bad idea. I feel really chilled at this point. But as you work up that heat, as you're going uphill, as you increase that exertion again, um, you're going to catch back up and you're going to be glad that you removed that last layer. So a lot of it, uh, Brian, is going back to your onion analogy, is peeling the layers off but then putting them back on. <laughs> um, right. yeah. yeah. I see another question, too, from uh, Becky. She's asking, what is a quarter zip? So the, when I say quarter zip, or it might be a half zip, is just from the neck down. And so that's just going to help ventilate, um, you know, out of the garment. Um, also not mentioned would be if you have uh, Velcro cuffs. Um, you know, everyone looks at some of these things just, just too simply or overlooks them, uh, maybe. Um, but remember, anytime you really cinch, whether it's at your cuffs or your hem or, or your neck by zipping up, you're trapping a lot more heat in, um, and that could be really good when you're cold, but think of it in the opposite way as well, that unzipping that quarter or half zip, undoing the hem, undoing the Velcro uh, cuffs on your wrists are, are all going to let heat expel so that you can not stop. You, you don't have to change layers necessarily. Um, dump some heat really quickly with those little minor moves. We have another one, uh, Brian, from Daniel, a uh, good one, exposed face area, layers or not. Like what have, uh, you, what have you used specifically when it gets really cold, like to keep your cheeks from getting? Totally, yeah. so good questions, thank you guys. Um, so it, for, for myself, it has to get pretty cold for me to want to cover that area, anything outside of a, just like a, a beanie. So to put on a face mask or a balaclava, I'm usually looking at something single digits or below, um, but it's just dependent on the person, of course, you know, or and it's definitely also dependent on the wind chill at that point, because you could get pretty, um, uh, you know, the, the more the wind chill, the, the more that's going to burn the cheeks or, or, or whatnot. So um, the balaclavas, um, are a little bit much for me a lot of the time. So I like to have independent layers. So a buff that I can pull up over, over my nose and my cheeks um, uh, or pull down quickly over my neck is going to be one of the quicker movements that I could do to protect that skin, um, but isn't a, a total head garment that I have to put on and off. Um, I've also been in situations where if it's really drastic enough, if you're getting into mountaineering, uh, a more full face mask uh, would be necessary, and, and you can get into goggles and uh, and things of that nature as well. Hey, Quinn one had a question. A... Sorry, I was going to say there's one more question I yeah. from Quinn, um, which actually is a perfect segue to move into our next section. He's asking uh, for base layer. Is there a difference between winter and warmer season? So that seems like a good point, a good place just to launch into the next section. Awesome. Thanks, guys. So I will go ahead here. Okay, so this is uh, um, a little bit about what it looks like when in warmer weather camping. And even when it's warmer, uh, when we're not talking about, you know, winter cold, um, the temperature varies throughout the day. So in this really stylish picture that you see right now, actually both of those pictures were taken on the same day. The one on the left was early in the morning when it was still pretty cool out and it was raining. And you can see, um, in case you don't know, that's me and the niece is with me in the other picture. Um, but I had on a hat, I had gloves on, I had a rain layer on, um, uh, in addition to the rain skirt and the umbrella and the things that you could see, because it was pretty chilly out as well as being wet. Um, so just like with cold weather 
camping, the layers and the flexibility are still the most important thing. Only now um, you've got more, um, more of a challenge to stay, keep from getting overheated as opposed to keeping yourself warm enough. Um, but you're still trying to stay the right temperature so that you're not going to be, um, try to minimize the amounts you're going to sweat, which some trips that's, that's uh, obviously not possible to keep from sweating at all. Um, but to, to regulate your body temperature by uh, doing the onion peel thing. Um, staying cool and protected from the sun will help keep you from overheating, uh, which could lead to things like heat stroke and dehydration and sunburn. So the, in the second picture on the right, it's warmed up a little bit in the day. And I don't know if you can tell, but the raincoat is still there. It's just hanging from my pack now. And the rain skirt is also still there. It's just pulled up and tucked into the waistband. So now my, um, I have you know, fewer layers around me keeping my body warm so I don't overheat. And um, I still have the umbrella though, which um, although an umbrella isn't necessarily um, very effective when you're in a, in a really heavily wooded area on a thick trail, um, sometimes it's a great way to keep from being too hot when it is raining because if you have to put a rain layer on, you're also trapping in body heat. As Brian mentioned earlier, the outer layer um, provides heat as well as protection from the wind and the rain. Um, see, I think that was all I wanted to say about that side. So other things, so you don't have to forego um, the accessories just because it's warm. And in this case, so they're not wearing those buffs for warmth and they're also not COVID masks, um, but they're a great UV protected buff. Um, so it, it helps with sun coverage. So when, um, I've already, already forgotten to ask the question now, I think Daniel maybe asked the question about um, covering your face. It's not always just because it's cold out. Um, in some situations, you want to protect your face from sunblock or from uh, sunburn as well. And uh, this could be a pretty effective way of doing it. So if you've got your buff over your face and you grab a pair of shades and put a big floppy hat on, you're, you're ready to go on a hot sunny day. Let's talk about pants a little bit. Um, as you can see from this picture here, the first rule of thumb is to wear bright colors, which is just a joke, of course. However, you do, show, you do stand out in the pictures better if you have bright colors on, but that's not really an issue um, in terms of keeping warmer, keeping yourself the right temperature. So most of the same rules apply to leg wear when it comes to picking layers. Um, fabric and layer diversity should fit the weather. And there are a few other differences as well. So hiking leg wear typically has more, uh, it's more durable with reinforcement at the cost and um, they have articulated knees to make it easier for you to bend. They will kind of move with you and a gusset between the legs. Um, also, I should have mentioned this on the previous slide, but in some cases, uh, especially for summertime backpacking, wearing a hiking skirt or even a kilt, um, it has become pretty popular because it, it provides a lot of ventilation and um, can help you, help, you, help you again from overheating. Um, your hiking underwear is also different. So the question about your base layer, obviously when it's 90 degrees outside, you're probably not going to put on long wool underwear. Um, but you, you are going to be looking for certain things like flat seams and things that are quick drying for sure. Um, that applies to whatever temperature, um, whether you're hiking in. And most men and a lot of women also uh, prefer something like a boxer brief or ladies you might, you might have heard it's called a boy cut. Um, it's a cut that helps pre uh, prevent additional chafing. So um, that's a pretty big deal. In fact, technical underwear can literally change your life if you're a backpacker. Um, Brian's gonna talk more in a minute about fabrics, but another life changer for me has been merino wool sports bras. Um, and I don't mean just for the winter, but year round, it's moisture wicking properties are outstanding. And every woman on here on this webinar who has backpacked in the summertime knows what it's like to wrestle with a really clammy, tight sports bra. Um, this is another case where we're going to find out wool is wonderful. It's not hot and it's, it's really comfortable um, all, all year round. So the other option, of course, is to just forgo all of that and hike only on June 21st, which is the summer solstice, also known as Hike Naked Day. Um, thank you for that image, Brian. <laughs> so just briefly, I want to mention a few things about sleeping clothes. 
Um, ideally, you want to be sleeping warm, but not too warm. It really can cool down at night, especially if you're backpacking at elevation. And one trip, one tip uh, for every trip, um, regardless of the season, is that uh, if you strip down to your skin and put on a dry base layer for sleeping, you're going to sleep a lot more comfortably. No matter what the weather is outside, your body is still going to be perspiring, and that means that your base layer that you're wearing while you're hiking, um, even during winter hiking, is going to have some dampness in it, and that dampness will continue to pull heat away from your body. So even at 50 degrees at night, as Brian mentioned earlier, um, with damp, dampness against your skin, uh, you're going to start to chill down. And for some people, you can get really cold, even at that temperature. Um, when it gets colder than that, you can, you can do things like adding a hat, adding a buff, um, wearing nice warm socks. Um, for warmer weather, you can remove those onion layers to help keep yourself at the right temperature. Um, and you can also wear sleeping clothes that leave your arms and your legs bare. Speaking of cold weather sleeping, Brian, would you like to say a little bit about how much clothing you should wear in your sleeping bag for cold, for any camping, for any, any weather? Perfect. Thank you, Nancy. Yeah. Um, absolutely. So um, it's a lot of people's tendency to try to bundle up. The colder it is, um, maybe you're less confident in your sleeping bag. Um, and my recommendation is that um, less, is, less can definitely be more. If you have a good base layer, something uh, that could just uh, keep the heat next to your skin, uh, that is going to be the preferred method. Um, the idea being is that your sleeping bag needs to do its job. If you put on a really hearty um, puffy coat uh, on your torso, which is the most uh, heat producing part of your body, then that heat is not going to transfer throughout your sleeping bag very well. Uh, so let that heat transfer, uh, let the sleeping bag do its job. If you have a sleeping bag that is meant for the um, temperatures that you're in um, and um, wear a little bit less. Yeah, I think you'll be more comfortable. You'll let heat get throughout the sleeping bag and, and keep your entire body a little bit warmer. Thanks, Brian. Um, with that, we're uh, ready to pause for a few minutes again and see if we have more questions related to this section on warmer weather camping. I have a question for Brian, since yeah. we don't have one posted yet. Hey, Brian, when I was looking at base layer in the past, you know, they have numbers on them, like 120, 220. What does that mean? Good, uh, good question. Thanks, Denise. So that is the weight of the fabric. Um, and, and not like you put it on a scale, but the weight of the actual like thread. So the gram, it's a, a gram um, count. Um, so the heavier weight knit um, will result in a, in a warmer piece. So the 150 is going to be lighter and more breathable. The 220 is going to be warmer. Yep, so that's very common in wool especially. And I usually consider something in the one to 150 range, a very uh, movable piece, uh, something that will breathe as you um, have a lot of exertion, um, and something in the 200 plus range, two to 250 range, uh, is going to have a, a better standstill heat. Um, if you're going to a ball game and want to stand still and, and be warm, that's going to be a, a better base layer uh, for you. We have a question from Becky. She says, my kind of hike, did you like the rain skirt better than rain pants? And I'll tell you that for me, I really love hiking in the summertime, especially in a hiking skirt as opposed to pants. It's just um, it's a lot more breathable. It's, uh, it's just more comfortable all the way around. And if I'm wearing a rain, if I'm wearing a hiking skirt, then a rain skirt um, obviously works, works better. Um, I, <laughs> I'm not crazy about rain pants unless it's pretty cold outside, just because they get, they, you heat up inside of them pretty quickly. But Denise, do you have a take on that too? Uh, I typically just hike in the, uh, I don't have a rain skirt. I use the rain pants, but when I do use rain pants, I usually just put a very, very thin, uh, base layer underneath them. Um, that way it, it, you know, their wool when they, uh, they absorb any moisture. And I also, you know, have learned to regulate my temperature by 
you know, as soon as I start to feel a little sweaty, I'll take a layer off so I don't get wet. But the rain pants, in my opinion, serve both purposes, right? One to keep you dry and, and they also insulate you when needed for cold weather. Uh, we also have a question from Christina. What clothing options work well for, for multiple seasons in order or reasons in order to keep pack weight low? Um, I think that's actually, thank you, Christina, a, a pretty good segue into fabrics. Well, let's um, go there. <laughs> so let's do that. And this is, sorry, Nancy, I was, oh, yeah. I, I knew it was during one of the questions, but uh, Denise, this is our next poll. Right. Um, oh, okay. We're going to start with a, a fabrics poll. Uh, and this is uh, multiple choice. You could pick um, as many as you, you, you'd like. Which uh, fabrics do you think make for great technical clothing? You guys did pretty well. Nice. Um, uh, unanimous on the, almost unanimous on the wool, uh, pretty heavy on the bamboo and polyester, and zero on the cotton, which, which I think we, we gave away in the yeah. title of the presentation, maybe. So, um, so you guys already know uh, uh, about jeans, cottoners, rotten. Um, so the common phrase. Uh, the cotton kills or, or, or any of those is because cotton has natural properties uh, to both hold moisture and to dry slowly. Um, and then it pulls heat from your body at an accelerated rate. Um, so that's what you do not want to wear. So that the, the denim uh, hiking pants up the hill, uh, be, be wary of that step, right? So what do you want to wear? So what, what, of the, what else of those... Um, questions were acceptable. Uh, and the answer is all of the other answers were correct. Um, and we're going to go over some of those. Um, and, and to get back, back to our question, uh, we're going to start with wool. Um, and so wool is one of the best uh, as it's naturally temperature regulating. Now, uh, Denise's question earlier uh, touched on the different weights of wool. Um, and so all these things will have different weights and, and different properties that uh, lend themselves to uh, different situations, but uh, wool being temperature regulating, um, see that sheep is very happy, um, allows you to be comfortable in a, a more diverse uh, temperature range. Um, in addition, wool is antimicrobial, meaning that bacteria does not grow um, on the fabric and therein it does not pick up an, uh, an odor. Um, this is true uh, short term and more long term for sure. Um, likewise, nature has also perfected insulation. Um, so a duck or a goose down provides an amazing warmth to weight ratio. Um, so think of a goose or a duck, if they can fly with it, then it's probably going to be pretty good for you to backpack with. And that's a good rule of thumb for, for weight. So if you see something flying with it, it's going to be a good weight for you to backpack with. Um, then we get into uh, polyesters, and so this is where the, uh, we'll, we'll get to it, but the water bottles comes from, right? So uh, poly polyester or other synthetic fabrics can be the quickest drying. So if you remember the cold weather slides, uh, the more wicking and the more quick drying, the more comfortable and least likely to get cold. Um, now, while Summertime sounds like cotton should be welcome because it's going to pull heat from you. Um, it quickly becomes uncomfortable and a soggy mess that chafes and, sh and sags. So like I still don't really recommend it in summertime, although for day hikes you can get away with it uh, a little bit more easy. Um, and then there's lots of options that make synthetics using recycled plastic bottles or by other means, uh, other recyclable means. Uh, so it's more carefree purchase. Uh, so we're not putting as many microplastics out there. Uh, but be careful, because as mentioned with wool being antimicrobial, polyester kind of think about the opposite, uh, especially with a base layer 
that eventually it's going to be, it's going to get a little bit harder to wash that smell out of your polyester layers. And then lastly, uh, the plants, right? So bamboo or lyocell are, are two um, plant-based fabrics. Uh, and, and there's a few others in the mix there. And these provide, uh, can provide moisture wicking still, uh, can be super soft, uh, especially if you look into the bamboo, uh, super soft and comfortable. Uh, and these along with other synthetics um, are more likely to have like a natural UV protection to them as well, um, or more likely to have it added in where wool might not have that added in uh, quite so much. So there's a lot of different fabrics that you can pick from. And so in, in picking something that is going to be most universal, um, you want it to be adaptable. So when we go back to those micro changes that you could do uh, if, you're, if you're a spring hiker or if you're a fall hiker, and you're looking for that one piece that gets you across that plane, you're gonna want a piece that's more adaptable. Um, so imagine a lightweight wool piece with thumb loops and a quarter zip. You're going to be able to adapt throughout that, um, that temperature change in those shoulder seasons. So that was a pretty quick run through um, of clothing and different, uh, different fabrics. Um, well, that's the last slide of the presentation. We're, we're not quite done yet, if you could stick with us uh, for a few more minutes. Uh, first, we wanna know how we did. Uh, we hope you found a few ideas um, for future backpacking trips. Um, and so we'll launch another poll uh, that will help us understand um, how much you learned or uh, how many surprises you had throughout the presentation. Um, but stick around past that because past that we want to also open questions uh, where we can unmute you um, or, or stick with chat box either or and can continue to the conversation from here. Awesome, thank you guys for your feedback and for part participating in that. Uh, while you're completing the poll, I'll mention that we will post a PDF of this presentation on the Sierra Club website, along with a backpacking gear list, which we talked about, uh, replacing a link in the chat box to the page on the Sierra Club website. Now uh, you'll find a schedule of future webinars posted there, um, and then give us a few days, but we'll also post a link to the recording of this webinar. Uh, along with responses to questions we didn't answer. Um, as we said at the beginning, you'll find a whole host of other things on the Sierra Club website as well, uh, like a schedule of our innings meetings, um, a series of educational meetings, our newsletter, ways to take action, uh, and more. So if you're interested in knowing more about the outings committee, you can also check out a recorded presentation from last year that describes our function and activities. Uh, we'd love to have you join us. Um, so I think we can kind of move along to uh, other questions and, and help wrap up some of those uh, fabrics and layers. So Daniel has a question. Any comments on these cooling fabrics, face gator that says to put into water to activate? I do care about more than faces. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, so, so some of those definitely work. Uh, often it's just kind of a polyester, uh, sometimes with the treatment and, and anything that's, remember anything with moisture is going to be cooling. Um, so it's not even always a secret property, right? That if you just kind of dip your buff or polyester, uh, neck gaiter, whatever it is into water and put it back on, then that's going to help expel heat from your body. Um, uh, you know, some of the treatments might accelerate that a little bit more, but um, it, it definitely, definitely something to, to, to go on there. And Quinn has one, any suggestion on what kind of clothing that would serve as PJ and backup day clothing to reduce packing weight? Yes, uh, absolutely. Thank you, Quinn. Uh, that, and that's, um, you, you nailed it there when we're talking about minimizing pack weight and multiple use items. Um, my pajamas are my backup uh, cold weather hiking clothing as well. 
you know, you'd, you'd like to reserve those for just sleeping and you do so as long as you need to. Uh, but you also know that you don't need to carry additional clothing just in case um, it gets too cold during a hike because you can kind of always resort to, to that as well. So for me, it's a very lightweight uh, wool top and bottom that I'm going to sleep in. Uh, and then if, if throughout the day, the temperatures are not warming up and I need to, uh, I can wear those for the hike as well. And I don't know if any other, Nancy, Barry, or Denise have anything to add to that there. The thing that I would add to that is that I try really, really hard not to wear my sleeping clothes for anything else, just because of that fact that I want to make sure I have um, a completely dry, dry layer to put on when I get into my sleeping bag at night, so I don't have any carryover dampness um, from anything I've done during the day. So although my, the only, the only time I'll do that you know, without hesitating is on the last day when I'm hiking out. Um, but to have it in reserve is emergency in case something just goes wrong and or things are different than you expected. Um, I, I think that's that's the right way, right way to think of that. Yeah, I agree hundred percent. I, um, you know, try very hard, like Nancy said, to, to never um, wear clothes that I sleep in, which is basically a base layer. Um, but uh, it is my emergency clothing. If it just gets wicked colder than I expected, or if I slip and fall in a in a river and I'm soaking wet, uh, that's what I change into because that's really the only other clothing I have. I basically have the clothing I'm hiking in and the clothes I sleep in. So. Yeah, I agree. Hey Brian, I had a question. You know uh, these new uh, the wool ones especially. I know they wear out sooner, and also I noticed I hung one up in my closet, and I don't think I put a little hole in it backpacking, but I've noticed, like, do you store any of these backpacking clothes in a certain way so they last longer? Um, yeah, your uh, wool specifically you've had issues with? Uh, yes. Yeah, wool definitely has less durability than the other options we've talked about. Um, and and this is something we probably should have touched on, but um, it's definitely important uh, for everyone still listening here. Um, having the garments be made for backpacking is also very important. So uh, wool is, is a little bit more delicate. And so if you get it with a little bit more uh, synthetic fabric also added into it, nylon, for example, is going to help strengthen it up but also so that it's sewn so that it's meant to be a backpacking fabric so that the seams are not across on top of the shoulders, but yet separated so that your backpack's not wearing into it. This means that you're not gonna have the same wear and tear uh, on your body, but also on the fabric. A lot of other pieces, uh, wool pieces, if you're gonna backpack with it, not just sleep in it. Uh, wool for me is primarily a sleeping layer. Um, but if you're gonna backpack with it, having reinforced shoulders, because it, it is more delicate, it's gonna wear through. Uh, I've had um, customers have issues with uh, holes in the fabric, just even in storage. I don't know if that's a moth issue uh, or, or what that is, um, but yeah, finding another way to store it or um, I guess more. Um, on, the plus, on the plus side, on the plus side though, I can say, cause I have, <laughs> I have a number of, of, of wool backpacking um, clothing items that have little holes in them. Some of them, the holes got big enough that I actually repaired them. I just kind of did a little of my own darning. Um, but the clothes still work just fine. The wool, mm -hmm. the wool is, is really good. And even, even if it gets little holes in it, um, I'm still going to be keeping around for a few years. Same here. That's and also, more... you know, it, it, people uh, on the call, they... Uh, you know, people really don't look at what you <laughs> what you got on. So, you know, if you if you backpack in your favorite shirt, but it has a few little holes, hey, it's your favorite shirt. Just go ahead and backpack with it if it serves <laughs> your purpose. You know, yeah. uh, a but, hole but, is just more breathability, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, Brian, I have another question. So, right. which they might be thinking about too. You know, people come out with. Uh, new new clothing all the time and my backpack clothing i typically don't buy a new one unless it's really worn out yeah. um i know there's you know a lot more tech there out there so how do you how do you uh 
I know there's some people that like to get the new stuff all the time, but are you also one that kind of keeps what works for you? Um, yes. Um, and, and, and for me, so I, you know, I'm a special case since, uh, you know, having an, having an outdoor store where I have access to these <laughs> things readily, I want to play with all of them, yeah. <laughs> but it, it becomes very hard because I also become very attached to my gear, just like everyone else. And I yeah. don't need a new pair of boots. And I don't need a new backpack yet, even though I want to try the new backpack. And so that temptation uh, that I know all of you have is very, very real for me as well. And so I, but I also like to test and put the things to the limit. And so if I constantly got the new pair of boots or backpack or whatever it is. Um, I'm not really putting that previous uh, piece to the limit. So um, I, I also like to push its limits uh, for, for all pieces. And when something truly, truly unique comes out, I, I will give it a try. Um, for example, some of the bamboo stuff. Bamboo, it's not that it's new, um, but Free Fly is a company that I'm really enjoying right now. And they do some really like lightweight long sleeves or hoodies that, you know, I can, I can wear them through some pretty warm environments um, and not overheat. They're breathing well and they have a great sun protection. So I just feel good in it, um, in warmer environments. And so, um, yeah, I'll give, to, give into temptation here and there. <laughs> great. Thank you. So I don't see any further questions here. Um, uh, I'm, I'm just going to take this next slide here, Brian, if that's okay with you. Um, I just want to let you all know that our, our good friend Brian, who's um, one of our best tech guys, is also, as he said in his introduction, um, co-owner of Road Rivers and Trails. Um, and Road Rivers and Trails is one of the sponsors of um, this presentation, actually of the whole virtual backpacking school and the work we've done so far, um, along with the Miami group of the Sierra Club um, and Son of Truck and Travel. Um, whoops, did not mean to do that. My, my scrolling finger went crazy. Sorry about that. Um, also, if you liked what you, uh, what you saw here, especially if you've uh, been able to attend a couple of these presentations and you're finding them helpful, we'd really like to hear that. We'd like to hear a couple things from you. If you would just use the chat box, tell us the things that have been important to you, tell us new ideas that you got, and also let us know um, what else you would like to see in the future. We have um, already on the calendar five more uh, of these webinars scheduled every Thursday for the next five weeks with more in line to go um, to go live right behind them. Um, and if you have particular things that you'd like to know about, um, tell us so that we can try our best to address them. And then lastly, if you're finding this beneficial, you like what you see and you like the work of the Sierra Club, I'd like to invite you to join us um, in multiple ways. One would be by uh, considering a donation to help support the work of the, of the Sierra Club and the work of the Outings Committee. Um, you'll find a link in the chat box, I believe, that will um, make it possible for you to do that, to make a donation that'll go specifically to the Miami group of the Sierra Club. And then also stay in touch with us because sooner or later we're gonna get past the, this pandemic and be able to get out on the trail again. And uh, when we do that, we're looking forward to having a lot of our new friends that we've met for these webinars to join us. Um, and then I think that's 